Hello, beautiful people. If you are watching this, it means that you are unable to make it to the live session today or you're just needing a review. So before we started with today's class, uh, we created our own historical nickname. So a lot of times historians give famous uh, leaders kind of a descriptor word that kind of sums up their leadership style. So for example, Lorenzo the Magnificent or Ivan the Terrible or Alexander the Great. So students have opportunity to either put their names or a made up name and then some type of descriptor word like Miss Hughes the Mightiest uh, as an example. We had a cat check in on how you feel in today. Our state standards will analyze the cause and effects of the Renaissance scientific revolution and the enlightenment. Today, you'll learn about the causes and effects of the Renaissance so that you can analyze those causes and effects. And when you get done, you will have a formative assessment in the Google Classroom. That's five questions, multiple choice. You uh, know you have it when you earn 80% on your assessment or higher. So we started out with some timeline questions, which came first, the modern atlas or the Gutenberg Bible, and why, why could that possibly be significant or important? What could have been the connection between the rise of banking in 1429 and Columbus reaching the Bahamas in 1492? We talked about what's in a word. The term Renaissance is a French word meaning rebirth. In European history, it refers to an important historical period following the Middle Ages. The Renaissance begins. Um, the Crusades, which lasted over 200 years, increase the contact between the Middle East and Europe, and it helps usher in the Renaissance. What were the Crusades again? The spreading of cultural traits and the mixing of cultures across countries, ethnicities or, ethnicities or religions is known as cultural diffusion. Also, trade routes in the bubonic plague contribute to the development of this time period. The survivors from the plague were, formed the new middle and upper, upper classes. Italy becomes the cradle of the Renaissance or, or where it begins. Why do you think Italy became the birthplace of the Renaissance? Its location on the Mediterranean Sea made it wealthy and powerful trading region. From Italy's ports, traders could reach Africa, Asia, and Northern Europe. Trade helped the Italian city-states grow. Industries such as banking, manufacturing, and shipping evolved. These factors all spurred the growth and wealth of Italy, or in Italy. Italian city-states. Italian city-states is an independent state made up of a city and a surrounding land. A city-state became important centers of culture. What is culture? What factors do you think led to these city-states becoming centers of culture? Who has the power in these Italian city-states? Powerful families often govern Italian city-states. These families presided over government matters such as taxation and used their wealth as patrons of the arts, sciences, and philosophers. Guess, guess which family presided over Florence when Italian Renaissance was at its height? The Medici family. The Medici family was a powerful Italian family that ruled over Florence during the Renaissance. The Medici's influence transformed Florence. Lorenzo the Magnificent was a prominent member of the family. He presided over Florence when the Italian Renaissance was at its height. He was also a patron of artists such as Leonardo da Vinci and Sandro Boccaccelli. Patrons of an art. A patron is a wealthy person who gives financial support to artists. 
Why would people buy art? Patrons to the rescue. Typically, rulers of cities, the popes, and male or female aristocrats, rich people, bankers, successful merchants, notaries, high members of the clergy, religious orders, and civic authorities, and organizations like guild and hospitals. People wanted to surround their daily lives and buildings with nice things, but also to demonstrate other, to others their wealth and good taste and piety, which is religiousness. Humanism. Humanism was a philosophy that all people should strive to be educated and learn in the classical arts, literature, and science. There became a focus on the individual as a human. It stressed the importance of the human experience over religious teaching. It renewed people's interests in classical Greek and Roman cultures. Secularism. Before the Renaissance, medieval Christian civilization had been largely concerned with faith and salvation in the afterlife. The Renaissance art of the period in particular exhibited a secular spirit showing detailed and accurate scenery, autonomy, and nature. Secular secularism comes from the word secular, meaning of this world. Humanism plus secularism equals change. The ideas of humanism and secularism weakened the power of the kings and the church because Renaissance thinkers valued individual achievement more than a person's class. And this was reflected in the art from this time period. More on art next time. Thinking about what we just learned, create one question that covers today's content and throw it in the chat or unmute and share. Once you're finished with today's video, you'll go to the Google Classroom to take your Google formative quiz. It's five questions, multiple choice. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, email your teachers and have a mighty day.